Hi and welcome. We have completely test news for you today, and here they are. Japanese police starts investigate subway incident. Tokyo police says they are investigating a deadly incident on the city's subway, which media reports says involve a senior official at the Japanese Olympic Committee. Private broadcaster Nippon Television, citing Metropolitan Police sources, identifies the person as someone who worked in the Japanese Olympic Committee's accounting department and says his death was being treated as a suspected suicide. In addition, the police are investigating, says a police spokesperson who did not elaborate. A Japanese Olympic Committee's representative says the committee is also collecting information but did not give further details. News of the incident is one of the top trending topics on Twitter in Japan. The Olympic Games in Japan already postponed a year due to the coronavirus pandemic as the Tokyo Games is scheduled to begin on July 23rd. In the face of public concerns that authorities can halt the event and keep the Japanese public safe from the spread of COVID-19. Aung San Suu Kyi case against Myanmar will end at the end of July. Aung San Suu Kyi's lawyer says court proceeding in the first criminal cases involving the poses Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi are set to finish late next month, a decision by the presiding judge. The case is to uh, the prosecution case side has to close the Suchi's chief lawyer, King Mao Zhao, tells Reuters that the prosecution has until June 28 to conclude its case while the defense has until July 26. Suchi, 75, who is being held at an undisclosed location, appeared at the hearing and was in good health. She is among more than 4,000 people arrested since the coup on February 1st. The charges against her include illegally importing handlet radios, breaking COVID-19 protocols, and illegally accepting gold and payments of about $600,000. Suchi, who denies all allegations, is charged in a separate case with violating the Official Secret Act, which is punishable by up to 14 years in jail. King Mangza affirms she asked the judge to intervene in the case after court documents show she will be representing herself. The junta has struggled to impose order since it overthrew Suu Kyi's elected government and took back power after a decade of democratic and economic reforms in the once isolated state that was ruled by the military for nearly 50 years following a 1962 coup. The February 1st coup has triggered opposition by many members of society, loath to see the return of rule by the generals. Not a twice, she said. Filipino athletes receive COVID-19 vaccine before the Tokyo Olympics. Filipino athletes, coaches and staff bound for Tokyo receives COVID-19 vaccines as the coronavirus pandemic show no signs of easing less than two months before the Summer Olympics open. Over 500 members of the Philippine contingent are inoculated with China's Sinovac vaccine in Manila after the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease approves the prioritization of Olympic Games bound delegates and athletes. As one of the worst hit countries in Southeast Asia by COVID-19, the Philippine athletes shared about increased confidence after receiving the vaccine. The team, the Philippine team, and we're happy to help them. International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach say athletes they should travel to Tokyo with full confidence that the delayed 2020 Games will be safe for competitors and not jeopardize the health of the Japanese people. Even so, the Japanese government is looking to extend a state of emergency in Tokyo and other areas by about three weeks to June 20. Through vaccination. Tokyo is set to host the Games from July 23rd to August 8th after a one-year postponement due to the coronavirus pandemic. Malaysia starts rolling out vaccines around the capital Kuala Lumpur after cases spike in the country. Malaysia begins rolling out mobile vaccination units in the capital Kuala Lumpur as the Southeast Asian nation ramps up its COVID-19 inoculation program amid the surge in infections. A fresh two-week lockdown came into force in Malaysia on June 1st as the country battles the worst outbreak of the coronavirus since the start of the pandemic.
the mobile vaccination units are being used by the government to reach densely populated area where residents may have difficulty getting to vaccination centers. Hundreds of people wait to receive their first vaccination shot at a mobile vaccination unit in on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. An organizer of the program says there are currently only two mobile vaccination units functioning in Kuala Lumpur, but the government plans to add 39 more units within the coming months. About 2.5 million people have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine in Malaysia as of June 7, less than 10% of its 32 million population. Malaysia reports 5,566 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of infections records in the country to 627,652 and nearly 3,536 deaths in total. Indonesia and China hold the inaugural meeting of bilateral dialogue and cooperation mechanism. Chinese Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi meet with Luhut Bin Sar Panjaitan, Indonesia's presidential envoy, as well as the coordinator for cooperation with China. The two co-chair the inaugural meeting of the China-Indonesia High-Level Dialogue Cooperation Mechanism. A speaker at the meeting, Wang says, China and Indonesia are both major developing countries and emerging economies who share wide common interests and enjoy broad space for cooperation. Faced with the onslaught of COVID-19, the two countries, under the leadership of their heads of state, stood together to advance anti-pandemic and development cooperation, boosting their bilateral relationship. Wong affirms the China-Indonesia high-level dialogue cooperation mechanism aims to implement the important consensus recently reached by the head of state of the two countries. The framework will integrate and upgrade the existing channels of dialogue and cooperation and create a new platform while adding new impetus to the further expansion of all-round cooperation between the two countries. Wong also notes that the new mechanism will help both sides to pool resources, form greater synergy of ministries and departments from both sides, and promote post-COVID-19 cooperation in a more efficient and pragmatic manner so as to advance the well-being of people from both countries. China and Vietnam emphasize cooperation to develop bilateral relations. Chinese Premier Le Qixiang stresses the strengthening of political mutual trust and deepening of practical cooperation between China and Vietnam in efforts to lift bilateral relations to a new level. In a phone conversation with Vietnamese Prime Minister Pan Min Chin, Li says China and Vietnam are good neighbors and linked by rivers and mountains, and that leaders of the two countries maintain constant communications. Li affirms China will work with Vietnam to coordinate the implementation of the Belt and Road Initiative with the construction of the two China-Vietnam economic corridors and one economic circle and advance the construction of cross-border economic cooperation zones. He also notes that China would like to strengthen cooperation with Vietnam in the prevention and control of the COVID-19 epidemic and in vaccine development and production. The Chinese Premier says that China is willing to make joint efforts with Vietnam to push for early entry into effect of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and hopes Vietnam can provide convenience for Chinese citizens in Vietnam to get vaccinated. The two leaders agreed to handle the maritime problems according to the consensus reached by both sides and work together to maintain peace and stability in the South China Sea. South Korean Corps rejects wartime forced labor case against Japanese company. A South Korean court dismissed a lawsuit filed by 85 victims of wartime forced labor seeking compensation from 16 Japanese firms, saying accepting the case might violate a 1965 treaty under international law. The decision by the Seoul Central District Court will frustrate victims and their supporters in South Korea, but it will avert anger from Japan, which considers the issue of compensation for its actions during its 1910 to 1945 rule of Korea closed. The victims and their families sued 16 Japanese companies, including Nippon Steel and Sumimoto Metal Corp, Nissan Chemical Corp and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Ltd. in 2015, demanding compensation totaling 8.6 billion won or 7.73 million US dollar. But the Seoul court dismissed the suit, saying the 1965 pact covered victims' right to damages and South Korea was bound by it. 
Kangil, a lawyer for the victim, says the ruling was unjust as it contradicted the 2018 Supreme Court decision. UN says 100,000 flee fighting in Myanmar border state. The United States says an estimate 100,000 people in Myanmar's Kaya state had been displaced by fighting that included indiscriminate attacks by security forces in civilian areas. The United Nations affirms those people who flee Kaya urgently needed shelter, food, water and health care and urges security force to let aid workers and supplies through. Myanmar has been in turmoil since a military coup on February 1st, with daily protests in towns and cities across Myanmar and fighting in borderlands between the military and ethnic minority. The state media reports Myanmar's foreign ministry defends the junta's plan for restoring democracy after a meeting at which his counterparts from ASEAN member state presses the junta to honor a consensus agreement to halt violence and start dialogue with its opponents. But military defends its takeover by saying that the old election commission ignored its complaints of fraud by Aung San Suu Kyi's ruling party. Meanwhile, Wuna Maung Wing appreciates China's support for the peace and reconciliation process. The United Nations, Western countries and China all back ASEAN's efforts to mediate in the crisis which was triggered by military decision to end a decade of tentative democracy and international integration that it had itself initiated. Thailand starts implementing COVID-19 vaccination to fight the worst pandemic in the country. Thailand kicks off a long-awaited mass vaccination campaign as the country battled third and worst wave of the coronavirus pandemic. The government aims to administer 6 million doses of locally made AstraZeneca and imported Sinovac vaccines this month, hoping to assuage worries about the slow rollout and supply shortages. My feeling is that no matter what, we will need to go outside of home for the little things. So getting the vaccine gives us a sense of relief. Seventy percent of Thailand's population of more than 66 million people are expected to be vaccinated by the end of the year. So far, 2.8 million people deemed most vulnerable, including frontline health and transport workers, have received a first dose. Chinese president emphasizes ethnic groups like one family efforts to build modern socialism in China. Chinese president Xi Jinping starts inspection visit to Qinghai and says ethnic group is one family effort to fully build modern socialist China. He came to the village of Guoluo Zhangongma in Shaliuhe Township of Gansha County in Haibei Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture to learn about local Tibetan people's life. The village is home to 639 households of 2,458 residents. In recent years, it has actively developed collectively owned industries and enjoyed dividends mainly from supplating resources and assets. In 2020, the village's collectively owned income from sectors of animal husbandry, ecological subsidies and public welfare jobs stood at 361,200 yuan, with the villagers' per capita net income of 12,313 yuan, while the per capita income of registered lower-income households reached 7,678 yuan. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice weekend.